Hi everyone, Helen Blunden here at Activate Learn on Twitter. It is time for another book review and this one was really interesting and I must admit I am thinking about how I'm going to share a review without giving too much away from this book. Now this book is Muriel Sparks The Driver's Seat. It was written back in, it was published in 1974 and it is the first book by Muriel Sparks that I have read and wow what a book I'm going to seek out her other books to read them. If you have read any of her other books let me know. Now this was a gift to me by my husband he bought a whole stack of different modern classic books for me for a Christmas gift and this one I sat down Saturday afternoon and I finished it in a couple of hours. You can see it is quite a small book, a slim book, a novella of about 103 pages. But boy, it will suck you in straight away. Loved it. Now I'm going to try not to give too much away about this book because you really have to read it. It is so different to another other books that I've read in I guess a crime thriller and I don't usually read crimes or crime thrillers. I'm not into the whole Netflix situation of people reading about you know mass murderers and you know crime and true crime. Not interested but uh, this could be considered a it's not a whodunit it's possibly why anyway let me talk about this book the character is Lise and we understand Lise as being she's definitely not married I assume she's in her 30s maybe late 30s we don't know much about Lise we assume that she's Danish. Again, we don't know, but we do know that she speaks four languages, of which Danish seems to be the first language that she says to people and talks to people with. She's been working at an accounts department for about 18 years, and uh, she has a holiday in some unknown country, and we can surmise that it is a Mediterranean country. You see that there's a lot of questions that we just have right from the start. Now, the book opens up when Lise is at a clothing store and she's buying some clothes and it's really weird because she's buying some a dress that is just totally outlandish and a, and a coat as well. The, the, the colours are really so vibrant and strong and they kind of clash and she gets a bit stroppy with the, with the retail agent and she wants to buy the, the, the coat and the dress and it's just just shocking colors which she doesn't seem to get bothered by but others around us seem to also kind of pick up on this this fact that something's not quite right what is also not quite right is the retail assistant tells her that you know the dress that she's trying on is of a material that doesn't stain and this offends Lee so much that she just wants to take it off completely and as a reader I'm thinking maybe she doesn't like polyester maybe she doesn't like man-made fibers you know why is she being so over the top with her reaction in this and as we read we're just really intrigued with this character she comes across as someone who is slowly unraveling but is she we don't know we don't know as you read this you think oh my god she might be an unmarried woman she's um oh she's definitely unmarried but she's going on a holiday maybe she's gonna go break free have a lot of holiday romances you know just like the rest of the world would think but no she's got some other thing in mind anyway she's slowly unraveling and we're realizing that there's something NQI here not quite right so she goes onto the, the plane and she sits down uh, in between a couple of guys right the first guy is someone by the name of Bill that she starts having a conversation with and he's also NQI he's one of these types who 
is a, I reckon he was a cult leader. He certainly sounded like a cult leader into the macrobiotics, um, the macrobiotic regime. Eat me. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to, I'd like to. Unfortunately, I'm on a macrobiotic diet and I can't eat meat. <laughs> Starts to talk to him, but again, he's also as weird as she is. And meanwhile, on the other side of her is a gentleman who kind of looks at them both and gets fearful and then starts to get up out of his seat while the plane is trying to take off and moves to another seat so there was something that they did that offended him and Lise cannot let go of this you know why did this other guy just get up out of the blue and move over to another seat so the whole book is spent with her trying to find who this guy is anyway the plane lands she's in her new country and this what we're seeing is she goes to the shops and she buys all these really strange things, scarves, ties. She buys a food blender and she carries it around in her little plastic zipper bag. And she she meets people along the way. And one of the people she meets is a little old lady. And the little old lady is also very lonely. And they hang out together and they go shopping together. And the little old lady buys some slippers and then she gives those slippers to um, to Lise. And so we have this image of Lise in her vibrant, clashing clothes, uh, totally unraveling, staying with this little old lady who is also just as weird and lonely as she is. And Lise is definitely just trying to find this person and she's looking for this guy and they're talking with this old lady, you know, when this guy will rock up and the little old guy goes, is it him, is it him, is it him? But it's never the right guy. And Lise gets into all these situations. She gets in the middle of a student demonstration. So it kind of makes me think, you know, she could be in Paris or she could be in Spain or some kind of Mediterranean country. And she gets tied into these guys who want to... Um, get with her, but she doesn't want any of it. If you miss a day, you have to have two the next day, and that gives me indigestion. I have no time for sex. I mean that sex is of no use to me, I assure you. So she's kind of like very different. She's at a, at a time where this book was, I guess, in the late 60s. There's a hippie generation as well, you know, free love, sex. We think that, you know, she wants that, but it's definitely not what she wants. She... She seems to have a goal in her head that she wants to find this guy. And in the end, she does find him. And he's utterly, utterly scared of her. But I can't say any more because I'm going to give the plot away. I, I have to stop it there. So as a result, we see this woman who is driven and yet maniacal. Oh, she's not maniacal. She's... she's She's really weird. She's kind of unraveling. It's kind of like we're watching someone go through. We're seeing that there is something wrong. She can't see it for herself. And it's kind of like she's doing these actions beyond herself. And we know that there is something definitely wrong with what she's doing or why she's doing it. We don't even know why she's doing it. Anyway, this is this book is a really hard way to explain it if you wanted if you were thinking that you know she was going to go off and find some romance you're not going to get this if you were thinking that this is a feel-good book you're not going to get this if you're thinking that you want to find the answers as to who done it you definitely will find out who done it but the question of why hangs over your head and you it's a book that you keep thinking long hard after you've read it for such a short book, it packs a lot of punch. Now, I um, I looked this up whether as to whether there was a movie made out of it. No recent movies, but Elizabeth Taylor played the role of Lise 
in a 1974 film of this book and uh, it's something that I'm going to track down. I'm hoping it's not going to be too dated but the story is really unbelievable. I've never seen, I've never read anything like this. It makes me want to read Muriel Sparks some more because it is just so, so different. It takes you somewhere where you've never been and it just goes opposite to what you thought would it would be about. So there you go, The Driver's Seat by Muriel Sparks. Have you read and have you read this book? Have you read any of the other books? If you've read any of the other books, which ones would you suggest I read? Are they all crime novellas? Um, if not, yeah, just let me know because I'm going to get into a books now. <laughs> all right then, bye for now.